Hi, everybody. This is Pam Coey, and I'm in Hamilton, Montana, and we have Sarah Bush. And Sarah Bush, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of her. Uh, she's a professional artist, and you know we've been having a lot of uh, candid conversations, and I had in mind to uh, do some recordings with her because she has a lot of things, uh, a lot of topics that we love to talk about together. So today we're going to be talking about uh, her work and personal voice and how she's made so many decisions to make very, very strong bodies of work. So here's Sarah, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her background uh, and how she got to where she is today. So Sarah, say hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Bush, and I live in Taos, New Mexico, with my husband and my cat. <laughs> and um, I have an MFA in surface design and fiber. And I, for many years, I was a, I was, I, so I had my own jewelry line. I had my own stationary line. Um, so I did that for many years and sold them wholesale to boutiques, uh, museum stores, bookstores, things like that. And then um, I did a bunch of designing. I did product development and design for uh, different companies. Um, sometimes went to places like India and helped um, with the product development there with our product lines. I um, I have developed product for companies where we design projects for people to make. I mean, I probably have to, de I've developed probably, I mean, at least hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sort of craft projects that are were supposed to be high end for it, that, but that anyone could make. Oh. And that was fun because it used a ton of materials. And, um, and then I've just been focusing on my own artwork probably in the last decade or so, I'd say. What caused that transition? It sounds like you had a pretty interesting and ever changing. You got to travel, you got to do the creativity plus you know, get a nice paycheck that was dependable. What caused the, the change? Well, you know, that's interesting. So really, I, and I left out a piece for a while. I, uh, I, I did creativity coaching and I also would do creativity workshops for businesses. And I gave a few talks at South by Southwest about the creative process. And, um, and I would give talks, a lot of talks on uh, creativity as a creativity coach. And then um, I just, I think, you know, my husband and I talked and it seemed like it was a good time to just really turn and focus on my own work. I spent most of my uh, 40s focusing on my parents' health mm -hmm. and taking care of my parents in the last years before they passed away. And that was a real turning point in my life and probably the hardest thing that I've ever done. Right. And, um, and actually it was a turning point in my art making. Okay. That's an important uh, inflection point. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, yeah, I've spoken with some other artists and, and one particular artist called, uh, she, she titled this thing called the precipitating event. And I thought that was such an interesting term in that if, if you have a precipitating event in your life, how it can actually really influence your art. So with your parents passing away, it sounds like that was such an influential period that, you know, it, it was almost like there's new content that you have to work through and you use your art to work through it. Yes. And also, I think um, highlighting the importance and focusing on what matters most to you. Yes, big deal. That's a huge thing. So for you, um, looking at where you are now versus say when you were doing the product development, would you feel, would you say that you feel uh, that, you know, you, you're, you're really fulfilled, um, you're in this place where you um, are kind of finding that healing on a daily, a daily basis, and you're in a really good place now? I definitely feel like, um, you know, I'm really pleased with the progress I've made as an artist. And I feel like, um, I feel like that for, for most of us, it's, it's like an ongoing recommitting to yourself as an artist. Mm -hmm. And you realize how much deeper you can go all the time with that kind of personal commitment to your work or to what you want to say. And so, yes, I feel really good about that. When you, I enjoyed having really creative jobs and I learned a lot about discipline and 
kind of even inspiration. I learned a lot about that. And, um, but I was really giving my creativity to someone else. Right. So um, that helped me uh, pay my bills for a long time. So that was all good. And when I worked for myself, the big shock, like when I was designing a jewelry line or um, is that the designing part is almost like the least of it. So you end up having to do so much marketing and so much, so many other things that have nothing to do with what you enjoy doing. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. Well, that's really great. And, and, and again, we're going to, you know, just audience out there, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of discussions and uh, we have a lot to talk about um, in terms of, you know, Sarah's viewpoint on, you know, things like how do you manage your time and how do you keep yourself motivated? And she's just kind of hinted at that. So that's kind of a teaser for <laughs> another video. But right now what we're going to do is she's going to walk us through some of her work and tell us, um, you know, with, with uh, these bodies of work and work that, you know, you really feel you connect with, it's, it's all about choices that you make. And uh, she's going to be talking about personal voice and you know, where do her ideas come from and how did this body of work happen? And, you know, what kinds of decisions did she have to make about materials and colors and um, the use of line or the use of texture? So these pieces that I'm about to show you here are mostly on metal. And this was a, a most of them are from a show I did called um, I Am the Fire that at the Tao Center for the Arts. And um, so my thing, I'm going to try to have that is so I'll try to have the title and the size okay. uh, next to the thing. So this is on metal and I cut the metal into pieces and the fan is a really um, recurring shape in my work. And a lot of my work is in a shape is, you know, and that I think is my love of objects. And like, even as a designer of products, um, you know, I love, objects and and the object itself and it becomes like a, a thing versus a depiction of a thing does the fan yeah. have any particular meaning to you um so the fan to me feels very so it's feminine which i find interesting it's it feels very joyful like this feels like this to me <laughs> and like this letter so it feels like this opening up and just the the shape there to me is alluding to motion it's movement and it's stillness. And I love that about the fan shape. Mm -hmm. And I'm also really interested in the circle and the fan is a portion of the circle. Mm -hmm. So it just opens and stops and you can make, you know, I could make, I was actually thinking my next fan, maybe I'll have it open just a little, you know, that, but that in it's, it's alluding to movement. It's right. still, and it's, and it's alluding to the perfection of the circle. Yes. So I love, I'm, yeah, I also love just noticed that it's, you know, just by virtue of the fact that it does open and, and close and, and you can open it up as far as you want. It's like repetition of this, this shape, this almost like a teardrop shape again and again, you know, um, that's beautiful. Um, and, and that's gold leaf and uh, mica on there. I think my next image is a little bit... Uh, yeah, like, can you talk about how you uh, how you do this on your metal surface? Unless you don't, I mean, that that looks like a really uh, very personal thing you do there with the metal and how you do it. And um, yeah, I, it's a it's kind of a, a series of steps. And um, like here, you can see I, I drew a lot on the metal with um, metallic ink, mm -hmm. and then I put gold ink there. I think um, so. The process. And you'll see that over and over again. I don't know if I have a second. Okay. So all of these images, um, I, I make drawings and collages. This is what I would do on the metal. I made, and this was really even when using the metal was kind of new. I And this, this actually grew out of something I was doing as a product designer where I was using this unusual decal paper that I thought, for work. And then I was like, God, oh, this stuff's cool. What can I do at home? You know? Yeah. So I started to work, play with it. And so I was making these drawings and collages and then I'd scan them because I'm, I'm very comfortable in Photoshop. So I'd scan them and then I would combine them in Photoshop and kind of make a new collage. Mm -hmm. And then, and I used to make these little ones and, and scan them onto this, 
this water kind of decal paper and, and, and slide it onto this mirrored surface. And I loved the way it was glowing and capturing the light. Yeah. But when I wanted to get bigger, I, I, you know, like this little decal paper was only like eight and it's actually can't even use it anymore oh. because uh, it, it required a certain kind of color copier that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, no. So, um, so I would send that image out to, um, get infused into metal, which is basically a photographic process. Like they actually dip it. Sure. And, um, and then once it was on the metal, then I shellac it. Okay. And then I draw on it or I add things like glue things down. I add like this one here. I don't know if you can see with my mouse, like the gold, I have gold leaf, 24 uh -huh. karat gold leaf on here and in the circle. Lovely. And, um, and I'll use oil glazes on okay. that surface. Cause once you like shellac is really handy that way where it's yeah. um, so um, it's so agreeable. It's like willing to be on, it's willing to be on top of almost anything and it's willing to let you put anything on top of it. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, right. That's what I think there's a close up of this one next too. Nice. Yeah, the, it's just such a- uh, so You can I, see the gold leaf a little more here. It's beautiful. That I would apply yes. on these little bits. Wow, just gorgeous. Yeah, and what is the full size of that again? I, I missed- That's that. 30 by 40. Okay, huge, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't work too small that often. What were people's reaction when they saw that? You know, I mean, it must have been like this amazing type of feedback for you. Like, I, I can only imagine that they're really blown away by the, the scale, um, you. you know, the, the, the creativity behind it. Well, that piece was, it, uh, I actually, like when the, the Taos Center for the Arts was promoting it, they, they used that image in a press mm -hmm. release and someone wrote me and said, I want that. And I said, well, I have to have it in the show. So she just walked in on the opening night and bought it. So that was gratifying. Um, yeah, that was really gratifying. And then, uh, and then this piece is what I'm calling. So I, the book is another form that I am very intrigued by, and really early book forms. And so this is like an accordion book. I'm, a, you know, book I made with the metal. Right. So I use piano hinges. Okay. And on each of these to make it go in and out. Right. And um, hmm. and all a lot of the work in this show is based on a Borges quote. So I'm a real lover of poetry and I've made a lot of work <laughs> about this Borges quote. Okay. Do you, do you have it somewhere? Can yeah, you... I actually thought, oh, I better remember it. Um, so here... It, can you see that says time is a substance I am made of time is a river, which sweeps me along, but I am the river. It is a tiger, which destroys me, but I am the tiger. It is a fire, which consumes me, but I am wow. the fire. I can't see yeah. this, book, but uh, thanks for saying it. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, right. I had popped it up here. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's a big one, a huge one for me, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the work in this show, even too, were, was about that so you can kind of see I have time it is a fire and, you know and using that kind of book form kind right of so how how wonderful that a, a poem can inspire you um almost a whole body of work then you could uh have, have you done that like has that poem been at the basis of this body of work with metal would you I say? say you know not all the pieces but a lot, a lot of them sure. and sure. it's a really uh, touchstone series of you know like those sentences are a real touchstone for me, even about like when my parents were dying and thinking about what is time, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I think about time a lot as well. And I kind of want to grab time by the shoulders and say, slow down. <laughs> right. <laughs> Either that or clone yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another like the, Yeah. This piece is a 48 by 48 and, um, I cut the metal up mm -hmm. and I I have a shear mm -hmm. and I cut the metal into these pieces and then I could, a shear, I also can roll the metal. My husband and I like to buy a lot of uh, tools <laughs> and oh, we, buy tool we go to Harbor Freight and we looked at that shear for a long time. We had to justify it in our minds. You know, like, do you have enough things you're going to make with that thing? Both <laughs> of us. So it also has a roll. So I was able to curve the metal. Nice. 
And um, I also like to silk screen because I was a, um, a fiber artist, service designer by training. So I, uh, these pieces here, like each piece I've screen printed on it to give it that kind of snake kind of scales feeling. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to see that when we get a little closer. And I riveted the whole thing together. And that's what I did with the fan. I riveted all the pieces together. Gotcha. Yeah, so some of the, the um, techniques that you learn from your jewelry, you know, you've got the the cold, um, what do they call it? Cold, cold connections. Cold connections, yeah. It, yeah. So much of it, it's so cool how when you work with multimedia, multimedia um, like nothing's ever wasted. You know, you bring these techniques over. So oh, true. Why, why would you have silk screened onto this metal and, and not done the decals or, you know, I mean, it looks like a similar look. Um, um, so the, the image, so the underlying image is there, but I silk screen these skinny lines on it. Okay. Maybe I'll see if I can get a little closer here. Let's see for the and skin. I, I think there's a couple of close-ups I can show yeah. you. That. So um, here, I see. The, there's the underlying image. Yeah. And then I silk screen and then I drew gold ink all around it. Oh my goodness. And that's, that's really cool. because I, um, that idea happened later, you know, like I think, oh, it'd be cool to make this Ouroboros, which is the snake eating its tail, which is an ancient symbol of oneness. Mm -hmm. And I'll make my own version. And then, uh, you know, then I'm looking at it and thinking, well, this isn't enough. What, what do I need here? And then I think, oh, I've got this. And actually they were like dragonfly wings. I thought, I, I, I made a screen. Let me screen on these. And then, and then I look at the black and I think that's almost right. But I think I need to add that gold. I see. So it's like, it's just that. Thanks for sharing that thought process because it is really interesting to see how um, your, you know, your, your, it's a layering process, but you're always asking yourself, do I need a little more? You know, have I done too much? It's that, it's that whole question, you know, like it's such a process and you go through it regardless of whether it's a painting or whether it's a sculpture. Um, yeah, it's very cool to, to hear you talk about your process and the questions you ask yourself. Oh, great. Yeah, because that's definitely, you know, you have an idea, but then as you go along. <laughs> right, right. So here again, you can see, and I attached, you can see the rivets here. I attached the eyeball. Wow. Interesting. I can't even imagine how cool it would be to see this in person. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. I feel uh, attached to that guy. I like it. Oops. Yeah. Beautiful. And uh -huh. this is like a smaller diptych. And uh -huh. Now, I is like, it on panel or is this? Uh, that's on, it's on metal. Mm -hmm. And so the metal is then flush framed on the back. And you can see here, I also added some, uh, I screen printed on top of this and I drew a lot of white lines and you can, I added some, that's oil. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so and um a little earlier again I use a lot of text. So this was from an old uh I'll find like an old book cover and I thought, oh that was cool. Yeah. I think I scanned it and then you know, I just want the words to be there even if they don't like yeah. they're implying something, a story, sure. even though I don't really care if they're yeah. saying it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And that's more gold leaf there. Right. It's kind of like whatever. Yeah. You know, you're just asking yourself, is this done? This is another piece where um, mm -hmm. I used that found. Oh, hang on. So here you can see the feathers I glued down. Sure. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. So these are little tiny feathers I dyed and then I added them. And then, um, you know, I'd glue these three dimensional pieces on there. Hmm. And I don't know if you can tell that they're three-dimensional. Oh, that, that looks three-dimensional for sure. Okay. So you've got a real 3D quality to these. <laughs> yeah, and, and then added a little. And here, like, I like to find frames. Yeah. It was like an old window. And so for me, this is as much a part of the piece. It's not like I don't want anyone to take that out of there. Like yeah. the, the piece is the whole shebang, you know. How fun, how fun. So that's, I do that. I don't know when I can really find. Interesting. That's yeah, like 
shaping things and then finding things. Right. So it looks like you, you really love things like pattern and, um, you know, like the, the real, really small details, like these fine little dots and the fine little lines, like you kind of enjoy that process of, you know, using that ability you have to look very, very closely and pull something out. Like you enjoy that process, which for some, you know, that would be really, very difficult to do for many, many standpoints, um, patience and a steady hand and <laughs> the right material, you know, but. Yeah. I, think, I mean, some things I do can be a little tedious to execute, but if I want the end result, I'll do it. It's worth it. Yeah. It's the bottom line for me, you know, whatever it takes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. And I was thinking about the um, mycelium in the, in the soil okay. on that piece where I drew all those little, little lines. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And here's another found mirror, like mirror frame. And hmm. uh, that is part of the piece. Right. Um, and isn't supposed to be separate. And again, I have text and that's an old a ticket I had from a bus ticket when my, we were in Mexico. How fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So nice. this, Yeah. So in Photoshop, are you layering like quite a few layers to get? Oh, the... sometimes I have like 50. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> Very cool. And then, um, but then like adding the surface stuff is kind of what sells it here. Like this is like a, you know, I call this what hope looks like. And um, those sort of bright golden lines are, are gold leaf. But there was no photo I took here, you know, of, like of a sunset. I just sort of made one out of the you know, drawings and collages that I did. And, the, and there, and then I insert, I inserted some bits of photos I took of shells I had okay. um, in the bottom or old paint, but it wasn't, oh. I realized someone actually thought I had taken a sunset photo and then done a photo. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what you had hoped that they would see, but that's not what you did. <laughs> yeah. Or I want them to see a sunset feeling or a sunrise really. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, shaping it from flat things. That's and, true. I yeah. think that flat to is what I I like that texture in the bottom too. Like it's hard to figure out where that came from, but that's part of the oh mystery. good. And that was from like a old paint. Yeah, cool. And then like this piece, I was this is the other thing I do that was true on the fan where I'm I'll I'll play with surface that's shiny and surface that's matte. And it was I was trying to take a picture so you could really this piece is sold though, but um so I drew these gold lines on top, you know, coming into the center. Right. And then I actually found this little piece of solder where I was like, oh, that's perfect to glue right there to pull that tension in. Okay. But the sides are, are matte and the, this other area is shiny. And I like to, you know, in terms of the surface, I like to play with that and opacity. And right. Yeah. That's a... a a common thing I'll do. I'll leave this shiny shellac and then um it makes me want to see the the difference between the matte and the shiny, which is very hard to see in a digital photo. But yeah. Yeah, I just struggled to somehow. Yeah. And this was another found frame. I and I was really thinking about making a porthole or a yeah. an old watch and again in the circle and uh, hmm. so uh that was kind of my thinking there. And here's another fan shape. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. So much work, you know, so much thought. Wow. Yeah, I saw this one. It's like a hanging thing, isn't it? The mobile. Yeah, this is my first mobile I ever made. Very beautiful. So it was hard. Uh, that's another one where you, you know what it looks like when you see it in person. So you don't realize it's. And this is thinking about the next image. I think you can see that it's. Yes. Oh, yeah hanging you know what it's trying to do there how thick is the metal is it like aluminum it's or pretty thin it's aluminum that's right it's yeah. thin it's i don't know an eighth of an inch maybe a little thinner oh that's not too thin i was thinking <laughs> like the... yeah, it doesn't bend no oh, no like... it, it's rigid <laughs> okay yeah it's not that soft right yeah, yeah. Hmm. but cutting it into the shapes and a, um attaching it is I can't imagine cutting a perfect circle. <laughs> and having oh, to so that I actually, what I did there was I and went into Illustrator and I created the vector shapes I wanted. Yeah. 
And then someone with a CNC machine cut those perfect circles for me. So when I can cut the shapes myself, I do that. And when like in that situation where I wanted a perfect circle, I got that cut with a CNC machine. That sounds like a very good idea. (laughs) Yeah, I can't imagine. There's no way. Right. Gorgeous. Mm. But like this one, I cut up and I cut all the wing shapes out of that. And, you know, I've got that other video about that. Wonderful. Uh, So... That was a group of work about my metal. And now this next bunch of work is what I'm working on now. Um, When did you start this series? Well, this is what I do almost always, which I talked a little about last time you and I chatted was I might make one or two things and something where it's almost like I'm not ready. Like I, I have this idea and I make something, but I'm not really ready to make that body of work. Like it needs a lot of thinking on my part. So like I had an initial piece that I, that was almost like my touchstone, but I really got serious about it. I would say last year. Cool. Oops. Yeah. So talk, so, about, talk, about, your, yeah, talk about your materials and, and your palette and uh, what was the uh, underlying idea or theme? So I was, um, I was very, so I love, I really love the decorative arts and I really love Push, find, pushing that line between the like the decorative and the fine arts. And I love that history of, so I really love pressed flowers and I'm also, I'm, a, I'm an avid gardener. And um, and I really love the delicacy and fragility. Like the Qu- Queen Anne's Lace itself presses really beautifully. Like not all flowers press that beautifully. And it created all these shapes. And I was so First of all, I wanted to get big with the pressed flowers. I wanted to sort of take this traditional form that a lot of women have done over the centuries and then go big with it. And then I really wanted to see if I could use the, so I pressed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Queen Anne's lace. And then I wanted to see if I could use them as a mark making tool. Like what if they were my mark making tool? And um, so and I more and more my my spiritual journey and my art making fuse more. So I was really thinking about wanting to make spiritual work. And could I make work about, could I make these be about a big idea? So this piece was called Transcendence. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to express a big idea. Right. With these, a lot of them. And And a kind of a spiritual idea. And And so so then I, I wanted that that black to me is the mystery right. night. Right. Your three o'clock of the morning of the soul, all of that. And I'm here, I'm using, I'm, I'm gluing all this Queen Anne's lace down, which is quite the process. <laughs> and then I'm painting over it. I actually have learned, like in this one, I didn't do that, but I learned over time. Like I, I actually almost like gesso the Queen Anne's mm-hmm. lace first so that they're a little sturdier. And then I glue them down and then I uh, paint on them and then I add gr- uh, powdered graphite. Yeah, it's beautiful. Create that glowy feeling. And and so for you, it was not it was not a hard decision to have such a limited palette and, and a dark palette. It, it's more, no color wouldn't have any meaning in this piece. So this is what made sense to you. Yes, it's more like, like what's driving me idea-wise informs my palette, I would say, more than me being more driven by the palette or formal things and then creating work from formal concerns. You know, I've got an idea and then I'm it you know, like, like for me, this one, like right away, I I feel this um love of texture that you're getting from the Queen's Anne's lace, as well as like the pattern. You've got all these different sizes. Some are open, some are closed, some are sideways, but you know, and then the shape. But yeah, so it's um and it, there's a lot of mystery here as you look at it, definitely. Well, thanks. And I love how I feel like these Queen Anne's lace, they're so emotional to me. Right. As things like they they express so much emotion. It's in the way you've done it too. Like, I feel like you are definitely juxtaposing two very different things. Like there's the the fragility, uh, which comes from the flowers uh, that tend to fall apart. You know, we all know they fall apart, but the, 
the strength of what's behind them, that darkness, the, you know, it looks like, you know, I know what, what shiny graphite looks like, and it looks like metal. Um, you got this, you know, almost cold metal up against something so delicate and frail. That's a lovely contrast. Thank you so much. And you just expressed like one of my probably main things is like trying to explore the tension between fragility and strength. Right. I'm fascinated by that and how can wildflowers, you know, they are fragile and so resilient. Right. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And I feel like that's our human condition, you know, like uh, we're so we're both fragile and resilient. Right. Right. Yeah. Beautifully, beautifully distilled. Oh, that's remarkable. Now, how did you do that? Lovely. I, I see how you would have glued on the flowers, but how did you do the vase? So I cut out paper. I feel like I seem like some sanely anal art maker. Like, oh my, <laughs> oh my God. So uh, yeah, I cut all the pieces out mm -hmm. and glued them down. Wow. But you had to and, do a of, uh, drawing or painting on, the, on that chalice or vase, right? Yeah. So then I'm painting on it and then I'm trying to add that graphite. And when, as soon as I add another element into these, like um, I, I started to add like lace and it creates this other challenge with the graphite that okay. really threw me for a loop. Like how do I control this graphite? Cause I wanted to create some kind of depth feeling, even though it's very shallow, mm -hmm. you know, on the chalice. So if I just cover the whole thing, which is hard. And then I was also starting to use a, you know, at night, that sort of blue black, I was trying to capture that blue black feeling. I love that. Yeah. So that got incorporated into the series and even figuring out how to control the graphite. So it, that, that, so that it was doing what I wanted. I, I found that uh, um, super hard. I can imagine what your studio floor looks like with you working with so much graphite. Or my face. It's like, right. yeah, right. Yeah. Go to the supermarket. Why are those people looking at me? Oh, oh maybe that. I should have looked in the mirror before I left the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, we all have done that, I'm sure. Really lovely. Oh, I like that. Then you can kind of see this a little more closely, the surface. Oh. And do you grow these flowers yourself? I mean, is that part of the joy of it is that you're growing them or do you just pick them up? You go hunting for these flowers. Well, actually, you know, on the, on the East coast, the Queen's lace is kind of considered invasive and there are fields and fields of it. And I just uh, found a field of it and, and, and cut a bajillion of them. And I have so many now. Right. Um, <laughs> I really have a lot of times. <laughs> they thought you were like this weed control person. <laughs> I know, right. Um, yeah, colored some of those um, in a darker black. It's beautiful. Yeah, so I left those. I gessoed those and left them. Mm -hmm. And here's another example of the fan. And this tassel down here was a glass tassel I had found, and I um, dyed it mm -hmm. so that it would be black. Yeah, gorgeous. And then uh, that was me, like, oh, I'm starting to play with you putting black in there, and you know. Very so, powerful yeah. series. Yeah. So, you, so this is something that like you have X number of pieces and then once it's done, you're going to be thinking about where do I want to show this? Where do I want to exhibit it? Or have you already like got a place in mind or. I have a few places I want to reach out to, but I definitely needed enough pieces that yeah. I felt like I could show them. I sold this piece at my art and style show, but I thought I sold a couple pieces there. That one happened in December. Um. But yeah, so that's what I was real because this is a very slow process. Right. So um, I was, it's like, I wanted to reach out, but you got to show that you, you have to be able to show that you have enough of an idea so right. that the gallery feels like, okay, yeah. this person knows what they're trying to do. Exactly. Did you have a hard time selling that work when you knew that you're trying to build um, yeah, <laughs> pretty tough. I, I was a, I was torn. I actually want this woman was torn between two pieces, and I was thinking, please God, don't buy that bigger piece, even though it's <laughs> I'd get a lot more money, but there's no way I could make that again. Yeah, Is and I thought amazing. I won't make an identical fan. I was like, please don't buy that. Please don't buy that. Please don't buy that. <laughs> and then she was like, I'll get this one. I was like, okay. 
<laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm glad that, you know, you're. But it's funny that you asked that because, yeah, that was. But, you know, you still are trying to make a living. And yeah, it's 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 hard. I mean, the artist has to deal with so many things. It's it's hardly just the art. You know, it's, there's so many things. And I, I think that um, knowing that you are trying to accumulate a body of work, you want that pile to get bigger and bigger, but yet people want to buy it now. <laughs> Your pile goes smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah, those things really matter. So, yeah, yeah like you sort of always kind of just, uh, wrestling with that. Tension. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and also here, like here, I also use sequins and old bits of an old scarf that fell apart. Oh, that's and so dyed that, and I added that in. Yeah. And this one I really covered in the graphite. So, uh huh, oh, fun. But I probably redid this one eight times. You mean the whole piece or yeah. section? Uh -huh. Really? Oh, be wow. Where I thought, no, that wasn't, especially because it was an earlier piece for me. So I was like, what am I? No, this is not doing what I want. <laughs> what do I want? Why, you know, all that. And so, so was it kind of a matter of like, if this is on mounted on wood, you have to cut out another fan shape and another fan shape. And start no, off. no, I would paint over it and start over. I had all my, I was happy with my Queen Anne's lace, but I was never happy with the surface. Ah, okay. So I painted over it and, and then again and again. Okay. And I will say one thing about my product development is I, 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 I understand that uh, I can resolve that. You yeah. know, like when there's things that feel unresolved. Yeah. You just got to keep going yes. until you resolve that if yes. you want, you know, if you want to, but it's not like you have to like toss it. You got to resolve it. Well, that's, that's such an important message uh, because, and it's so cool that you kind of brought that with you from product development. Like, you no, know, there is a solution. You don't quit. You just keep going until you get it. You know, it's a very right. different attitude than what some artists will be like, Oh, didn't work. I got to start over like just over the entire thing throw it in the garbage, um, you know, burn it. <laughs> yeah. And, well, you know, sometimes you might want to burn it. Yeah. I know that yeah, feeling. There's a tendency, but, but I love it how you you're tenacious. Like, no, I've got this piece. I'm going to make it work. And I know I can, you know, that's a level of confidence that you bring with you. So, yeah. And when you have to work on a deadline for a lot of years, I think you, uh, as you learn that. Yeah. Like definitely. this stuff has to be done by Friday. They don't really care what my really, my feelings are about it. Right. right? Yeah. I love how so, you brought that into your studio. <laughs> yes. That's a nice, that's why I feel like a gift from all those years. It is. Oh yeah. Look at that. And then this piece I was, um, so again, I, I collect found objects and, and you know, my, my, my surface design background, my repeat patterns, like that's definitely is a big thing. And my love of fabric. So I, I found these pieces of lace and I would, I cut them into other pieces and then I dyed them. And then I added these, I was, I collect old gauges and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So kind of see that maybe a little better. Oh yeah. Much better. Yeah. But the gauge itself, you know, it, it fits with uh, the, it's not like brand new, you know, shiny look, looking like you just bought it out from Kmart or something. It's got yeah, right. ancient. That would yeah. Of course. Yeah. But uh, cool. And then you painted the edge with gold again. And yeah. there's like a lot of repetition throughout your series of these repeated elements. Um, yeah, fabulous. Gives a lot of a lot for people to like take in, to take in all these different overall um, supports. Like you've got circles, you've got fan shapes, you've got, you know, rectangles. But the, the color, the, the color black, the repeating shapes of your Queen Anne's lace. And yeah, very cool. Yeah, like I feel like when you make a series, it's so important to me that I'm just not repeating myself. Like I'm trying to explore the idea more fully. Right. So in each piece, I want to, I just want to make another exploration of this idea, and I'll hit a point where I feel like I'm done. Right. But um, there's no way I could just kind of, yeah, repeat. I, I know what you mean. I like how you've varied your series. There's a lot of variation within your series, which makes it uh, just so full and so well thought out yeah oh well thank you and you just don't want to i don't want to bore the viewer i think that's also my fear well and and when you limit your palette like this and and have this one shape that keeps repeating i mean i you know i can you can see how you got to be really inventive and that's what you've done here you definitely keep each piece is so unique and that color that color blue is is really striking with your graphite gorgeous 
Because a lot of colors don't look good with graphite, I find. Right. I feel like the blue and the black are like it for me. Aren't they? Yeah, gorgeous. Just and nice. everything else, it gets a weird, like maybe it's, I don't know. Dirty. Like I red, I, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, right. I think that's what it is. And there's another gauge. Yeah. Oops. Oh, no. I shot. Hang on. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, I feel like, I'm also a huge fan of Japanese art, and I feel like this one really expresses that, even though it's probably hard to see. I have a, um, I have a lace thing here, and I've got these, I always think like, oh, Sarah, there's your little nod to the cherry blossom. <laughs> the you know, it, it sneaks in, and I'm, there's so much about uh, Japanese art I'm a huge fan of. Mm, wonderful. Have you been to Japan? No. Wouldn't that be great? You should go during cherry blossom time. <laughs> and I'd love, I feel like if I go to Japan, I'd want to learn something like um, have some intense shibori class or something. Oh, you would. I'm pretty sure you would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, here's just another, you can see the blue a little more here. Right. Yeah. Mm. And then this piece I wanted to explore Gloves are another image for me. Gloves are very emotional to me. Uh, they show up, I draw them sometimes. And I wanted to do the black and the white. And I was also wanted to, these the next couple of pieces, I wanted to make them because I wanted to make prints from them. Mm -hmm. Because I thought when I use the, um, like when I use these ferns like this, these pressed ferns, mm -hmm. they're old, but like they're exposed. And so they're going to change. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm actually toying with this and the other one of making them all black. Like now that I've made the prints and I have the prints, I might, I really love this piece, um, but I might, um, I might move forward with it now that I feel like, well, I've got these prints, which is what I was wanting to make with them because it was so tricky to glue this and maintain this very matte surface that I was trying to achieve. And so here are the, some prints, like these archival pigment prints that I'm interested in selling like that. Really beautiful. Yeah, there, and there's something, I mean, I, and I'm, I, you know, I, I suppose people will bring their own meanings into this, but, you know, for you personally, what, what, um, if you were to describe how you feel about combining the gloves, whether they're black or white, whether they're long, you know, elbow length gloves or, or, you know, smaller, um, you know, with these plants coming out of the fingertips, um, like, <laughs> what is that? Weird? I mean, I can you know, it's a real reaching to me Is and, it? um, and that kind of becoming like, it feels sort of spiritual to me, especially that previous one, right. but, and the really worn gloves, I really like things that are very worn. And I think they also express that, uh, life, you know, we're all in that school of hard knocks and even in our, our spiritual journey like um reaching for that oneness yeah wanting to like feeling that wanting that connection and the gloves are like again the gloves feel very emotional to me right they are oh. our hands but they are these covers of our hands and yeah oops and i love old things in general so i'll just collect the ones i like and then kind of yeah so Sorry, I, I knocked it. That's okay. Uh -oh. I mean, for me personally, I, I, they're both so powerful, but I, what I feel, um, which is very spiritual is kind of my, cause everyone's going to bring their own meanings to your work. Right. And for me, yeah. it's like, you know, um, the gloves, because they are so worn, um, they have this feeling of like, they've, the person wearing them has lived a long life and, after they die, um, they become one with the earth and then the earth becomes these flowers. <laughs> I suppose that's, yes. that's the obvious, but for me, not... yeah, I love, I just love how it makes me feel like, cause this is my, my personal feeling about death is that the spirit never dies. Um, we right. just change into another form and the idea that we become these beautiful plants you know I, I love to think of that <laughs> oh thank you I love that and I love like the lace I also really like uh, having these lace circles that I'd find in these antique stores right and then I dyed them and then like I like how they're wobbly you know so it's, it is the perfect circle but they're the wobbly 
kind yeah. of emotional it's, again, human circle. We, we don't want perfection. You know, if that were perfect, it would be um, saying something different. But the fact that it is imperfect is it's life, right? And life is imperfect. Yeah. And I might keep going with this now that I've glued them down for these prints. And then like here, you can kind of, oops, you can okay. kind of see how I added that knob. Oops. I can I imagine like gluing that thing down and <laughs> having every single cell of that, like being glued down. That would be so hard. Yeah. I see that extra piece you've added. Cool. Yeah. I kind of drilled a hole and added that knob because I, yeah. you know, almost like that feeling of turning it. Right. Manually. Right. Kind of play with that notion. Yeah. I'll, that, this took me a while to glue down. I glued it down and the, and the color all ran and the, oh my, <laughs> pull that off and <laughs> it's paint amazing. it over again. And yeah. Thank a lot of little surprises. Yeah, right. Not always happy surprises. <laughs> I know. When you use a lot of different materials, you, that's what you kind of do to yourself. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Wow. And then I just made the prints. That's beautiful. Right. And then I also like to do make installations sometimes. I don't know if you want me to show these or skip them or we can go through it quickly. Yeah, sure. So here's a couple of I made this one in the 2020 election. Okay. where I was trying to make a secular kind of altar, like an altar to our secular values. Oh yeah. I love, I love, I saw this video and I thought that was so cool how people interacted with it. Yeah. All over. I had like 700 people that night doing that. And this is another um, installation I did with a friend where we collaborated and uh, I'm just going to, what I loved is that she and I make really different work. Mm -hmm. So we collaborate. It was right at the beginning of COVID and there was a call for our artwork and these cities and they like a proposal sure. and so I said to her let's do this thing together let's make a wheel of fortune and we drew all these drawings together like we 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 agreed on a palette and then I broke it a little and added some sepia and some tan but like a, a black and whitish palette and then we both drew it home almost like that exquisite corpse thing where you have a, the feet the body and the head and then um because at the beginning when everyone was super scared and then you no know, no one really knew and then we went outside and we, we we traded them. And then we finished each other's drawings. Oh, wow. And then, um, you know, we made this wheel. What and uh, that was collaboration. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a very gratifying collaboration. She was a wonderful partner for that. And then I drew that hand and we made this sort of tarot card thing. And it. my <laughs> husband helped us make it move. Oh, my goodness. That is so cool. I was like, I want to make a giant wheel and I want it to turn really slowly. Can you help me with that? And he was like, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was my engineer there. Okay. And then this is just little bits of my studio. Okay. Um, this is the room I'm in right now. And I opened this front studio to the public um, okay. on the weekends. Tell, tell people where you're located so they can find you. Yes, I'm in Taos, New Mexico. And you can reach out to me, Sarah at Sarah Bush Artworks. And if you're in Taos, reach out to me and, yes. you know, come to my studio. And your website is? SarahBushArtworks.com. Very easy to find. We'll have that in the video. Great. And Sarah Bush Art. I realized that was a, I have them both. Okay. But um, wow. I'm totally cool. People coming in, even if I'm not open. And you can see I've got a, something on the floor there I'm working on and yeah. some things on the wall that I'm working on in my yard. Oh, I think people would love to come see you for the inspiration and uh, talking to you about your work and yeah. And like, these are pieces I'm working on right now. That's Nuno felted. So I've felted the wool with silk Ooh, and wow. I'm going to add some embroidery and then I'm going to embed it in that cabinet door. Wow. Those are my little embroidery things. And then these are little, like I like to do little assemblages. Oh yeah. So I'll have these little guys. And then this is like, oh, thinking about what might be next for my. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. And then so I thought, I don't want to seem like I'm too neat. Like this is really my, in my back studio. <laughs> okay. okay. That's more like it. <laughs> Make some of us. I'm the opposite better. of neat, really. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Sarah. What a tour of your work and your thought process and what you're working on now. It's just beautiful. Thank you for being uh, such a wonderful viewer of my work. So gratifying when people understand what you're trying to do. I know what you mean. Yeah, it, it often doesn't require more than just a few handful of people who might kind of get it, you know? Yeah, that's right. But I would imagine that in your case, a lot of people have been very responsive and, and uh, positive about your work. Ah, wow. I just feel invigorated and um, oh. yeah, it, it puts you into a different place when you 
can really hear an artist talk about their work and they've got such uh, strong ideas um, and so clearly and effectively communicated because it's so hard, so hard. It is hard. Right? Um, I can panic, like you said, talk about your personal voice. And I'm like, Duh, <laughs> what's my personal voice? Can I talk about it? You just did. Yeah. <laughs> you did an awesome job. Oh, I, I love that you were feeling kind of like, oh no. <laughs> Because um, most people watch this and be like, oh, she's really got it. You know, she's got her stuff together. <laughs> oh, good. No, no. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much. What a treat this has been. I just, I, I want to follow every single body of work you go on to next. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Very fascinating. You keep doing your wonderful work. And thank you so much for sharing this with all of us. Well, I'm honored that you asked me. So I really oh, yeah. I'm not going to leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoy that fabulous tour of uh, what Sarah does and look up her website, uh, follow her on Instagram. You have an Instagram account? Yes, that's Sarah Bush Artworks. Gotcha. Okay. So Sarah with an H. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay.